Pomfai, who will explain the science behind the prize to you. Peter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Joran. Okay, <clears throat> so I would like to start to introduce you to one of my co-workers who is working all alone in his office one early morning. But please look carefully at the slide. Is he all alone? No, of course not. He's surrounded by friendly molecules, molecules that make his coffee taste great, that keeps his food fresh, smoothen his skin, and as you probably can see from the picture, he's working on a very important press conference, so he's a bit stressed. So he also needs some molecules to relieve him from his headache. Now, some of these molecules are isolated from natural sources. Others are man-made. And the question is, how do we make man-made molecules? Well, the, song, the answer is straightforward. We make them from simply building blocks and forging them together. But to be able to do that, we need two things. We need good and powerful reactions, and we need good methodology. And this year's prize is about the development of a new powerful methodology for making organic molecules. Before we proceed to discuss the actual prize, there's one more thing we need to know about organic molecules. Some molecules <clears throat> are like our hands. They are non-identical mirror images of each other. So our hands, they are both hands, but they are not identical. They are simply mirror images of each other. And one such molecule, just to give you an example, is limonene. One mirror image of limonene smells like orange. The other one smells like lemon. Now what does that really mean? It means that our bodies are capable of differentiating between the two mirror images. And if you don't believe me, I have the two different mirror images here, and you're welcome to smell them afterwards, and I can guarantee you that you will smell the difference. Now, if we can, our bodies can differentiate between two such simple molecules, then of course it will be able to differentiate between the mirror images of drug molecules that can have a different physio physiological response. And it then becomes important to selectively be able to manufacture only one of the two possible mirror images. We have two techniques available for that. One is metal catalysis, and the other one is using enzymes. This year's prize is about developing a new methodology for selectively making one of the two possible mirror images of a molecule. And it is done by using designed small organic molecules, and it's referred to as asymmetric organocatalysis. It started by two key observations in the year 2000, made by this year's laureates, and I will discuss them separately. So Benjamin List <coughs> started with a reaction that is known as the Aldol reaction, it's an important reaction in organic chemistry where two molecules are forged together and at the same time creating a new carbon-carbon bond. And the two product molecules are formed as two different mirror images of each other, non-identical. Now this reaction is ongoing constantly in our bodies where it's catalyzed by an enzyme called allulase A. Now this is a huge enzyme consisting of about more than 350 amino acids, but it's only three amino acids that are responsible for the catalytic activity. It's a lysine, a glutamic acid, and a tyrosine. And Benjamin List asked, is all this other stuff really necessary, or can we simplify it? And he managed to show that indeed, we can, and only a single amino acid is necessary to catalyze this reaction, and that is a proline, a molecule that we all have in our bodies. 
So he showed that this particular problem is possible to simplify. We can identify a small organic molecules that catalyze the aldol reaction. Macmillan's entry to this problem was different. He was interested in a reaction that is called the diels alder reaction, which is a very powerful reaction in organic chemistry where two molecules are forged together and forming a six-member ring. And six-member rings are ubiquitous structures in organic chemistry. They are everywhere in our bodies, in nature, everywhere. So it's an important reaction to make them. The problem with this reaction is that it is rather slow. And one type of catalyst that speed up the reaction by activating one of the substrate's molecules is shown up here. And David Mamila wondered, this catalyst has two problems as he viewed it. One is that it contains a metal atom, and the other one that it's so sensitive, so it's never used in industry. Now, is it possible to get rid of the metal atom and make something that is more stable? And indeed it is. He designed a molecule that is called an imidazolidinone and shown that that is possible to use to activate one of the substrate molecules to form an intermediate that's called an uh, iminium ion. And then it's so activated so the reaction will proceed and we will form the product and preferentially one of the two possible mirror images. This year's laureates <coughs> showed that it is possible to design small organic molecules to act as asymmetric catalysts. They rationalized their finding, which is very important, and this resulted in an immediate response and activity from the scientific community. And as a result, today we have a large number of organic catalysts available, and we also have a large number of reactions which they catalyze. Now, what is the consequence of this? The consequence is that we now have a new powerful tool, new powerful tool available for making organic molecules. Compared to metal catalysis, organocatalysis is a more sustainable alternative. It has been estimated that catalysis is responsible for about 35% of the world's GDP, which is a pretty impressive figure. And then if we have a more environmentally friendly alternative, it's expected that that will make a difference. I will give you two examples of that. The first one is a molecule that is called oseltamivir, which is the active ingredient in an antiviral drug of much current interest. The organocatalytic route to oseltamivir consists of five reaction steps, while the current production route to this molecule consists of 12 reaction steps. And then we need to know that each reaction steps make an environmental impact, and it's important to reduce the number of steps it takes to make a molecule. So comparing five to 12, that is a significant difference. I will give you one more example, and that is the molecule strychnine. Now, as you all know, strychnine is a very poisonous molecule, and you would ask, naturally, who in the earth is interested in making strychnine? And the answer is, well, nobody, of course. But this molecule has a significant interest to organic chemists because it has a very complex structure and it is then a good measure to show how efficient our methodology is by comparing it to previous methods of making it. And the organocatalytic route is 7,000 times more efficient in making strychnine compared to the original route, which is once again showing the power of this methodology. So in conclusion then, we have a new tool available in organic chemistry, and this is of the greatest benefit to 
humankind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter.